Hello everyone, so this is going to be the follow-up to the previous video of when I did Campanella Normal on Bronte, kind of showing the setup I do for skill builds, and now we're going to be doing Campanella Extreme, and this is going to show the setup I do for weapon builds, uh, as well as having a lineup that is not optimal. So Planet 1 and 3 are terrible, we do not want these, but all the rest of the planets are great. We do not want Planet 1 and 3, as they are mechanical-based planets, and most of Bronte's damage is going to come through windows where she is doing shock damage. So if we can't shock bosses, we lose all our damage. Um, going over relics, we've got infinite mag, got critical defender and our giant's neck, and then we have single shot magazine, as this is a weapon build like I mentioned before. Now the reason I'm doing this combo is because the highest DPS weapon for lightweight breakers is the assault handguns. So if you can get a god roll assault get handguns, you're pretty much set. But the limitations of those weapons is obviously how fast they go through ammo. Anytime you're spending reloading, the less damage you're doing. Um, so we take infinite magazine to never have to reload. And then because of the fact we don't ever have to reload, we take single shot magazine for the 100% weapon power. And because it's a tier one relic, it's not going to appear in the tier uh, in the Campanella pool because they only show tier two and tier three relics. So this gives us 100% weapon power where we otherwise wouldn't find it and still allow us to find those other 100% weapon power relics and gain a lot of damage that way. Then the critical damage, uh, critical chance that we're going to get from critical defender is going to put us at 65% before we enter the room. Along with procking it from the attack power we gain from giant strength from the damage proc that this has allows us to stack it up before entering fights. Skill wise, I'm deciding to start with the shock target on Bionic Pulse. As this is going to be a weapon build, we don't really need to start with the weapon, uh, the skill power related stuff that we usually start with. Um, so. In terms of skill upgrades, what we're looking for in the box are going to be mostly the weapon related stuff or the global multipliers. So for example, this, this is a global multiplier. This gives us plus 50% damage to any target that's hit by our detonate. And we're going to be wanting to firing out our detonates anyway later for one of the weapon power buffs that we can find in this run too. So we'll take that and now let's start shopping. Assault handguns, uh, oh wow. Uh, we'll start with this and this and roll once. And we'll pick up the weapon weak spot. So now this is an incredibly strong start for Bronte. This is really good. We're not going to bother popping Bionic Pulse or anything right now. As we can't shock this boss. So there's no need. We're going to start stacking our critical defender. And yeah. And you'll see the damage difference from Planet 1 and Planet 2. Uh, now obviously this is a very strong start. Uh, this is not going to be happening in every single run. But uh, you know. There's, there's chances of this happening. Uh, usually when this happens in my runs anyway, the RNG around the middle kind of falls off, so prepare to see failure around 5. <laughs> like the damage is going to hit a wall. That is the downside to uh, Bronte in a weapon build, is her early damage is incredibly strong, but then later on into the run, uh, damage drops off as it doesn't scale that high. Skill build as Bronte does scale much higher, and you will have more success with a skill build if you're trying to get the fastest Bronte times possible. But um, overall, the early planets are much faster with a weapon build. We'll pick up that weak spot we previously mentioned. Now let's compare the speed in which we just killed this boss, which was 13 seconds, in comparison to the next planet, which we can shock. The damage difference will be extraordinary. So we'll start stacking now. So we'll press the button there. Uh, we'll pick up the weapon power, check through here, roll once, nothing great. Um, all three of these are great. Um, personally, I will probably, we have a lot of weapon power already, so personally I'm probably going to pick up the, uh, critical grooves, so we have more consistency with our crits, as, obviously if you're stacking lots of crit damage and then you don't crit, that's doing nothing for you, and that's a lot of damage to be missing out on. So yeah, we'll save and get the critical grease afterwards. I know someone's probably going to scream at me, like Dippets will probably scream at me and be like, pick up the power rounds, or pick up the status effects go. But I, I much prefer the critical. Uh, Bind a pulse before we enter the room. Once we enter the room, fire out a ball, and then detonate it to apply shock, and then just unload. So, fire, detonate, blink away. And yes, the damage difference is extraordinary. Only seven seconds. Now I technically, I, I realize a mistake I did earlier, I technically, I, it's been a while since I played Anvil, um, life has been busy for me. Uh, what I should have done earlier was, even though it was a shock planet, I still should have used the ball. I had the multiplier, I had the 50% uh, multiplier that I could have been applying, but it's whatever. Um, 
None of this is great. Doesn't really do anything for us. They did patch this. They have fixed the uh, detonate. This used to last for your entire run if you activated it once. Doesn't do that anymore. So instead, we're going to pick up the Bionic Pulse cooldown. And then we're going to save and pick up the critical box afterwards. So the reason I've been absent is life has been hectic for me. My granddad has been in hospital. He had a stroke. Um, he's doing all right. He's, he got released today. We've, uh, we've moved him back into his place. But I've basically been preparing his place along with my family to... Uh, Pretty much get him ready for when he comes home, make it, making it like wheelchair accessible, making it like just a place he can actually live in, as well as sorting out his occupational therapist and getting things put in place for when he leaves the hospital. And that's all sorted now, so he's out. Um, I'm still going to have to be a little bit gone and helping with a lot of stuff to do with him, but uh, so I'm still going to be kind of MIA. But there should be some more uploads coming now in, than there has been. And at the same time, the World of Warcraft expansion just released. And uh, yeah, I am a competitive raider in there, so I need to be preparing characters and stuff ready for when the raid tier opens. But that's that's pretty much where I've been and why there hasn't been any videos. Life has just been obviously busy and life priorities always come before games. Including WoW, even though WoW is technically how I make my livelihood. All right, we're just going to dodge these balls. Now, I should technically be killing the side, the side ads, but it's okay. We're just going to not really care about damage right now like how much damage we're taking push him into the next phase now let's kill this ad because he's going to go immune in a second stop him from healing though go into this there is kind of like a safe spot back here so you see that corner i was in apart from the little balls that i just got like stray hit by but if i like go to this corner for example you wouldn't ever get hit from over here with those uh the dark blue balls that come from this attack They just go over you. But obviously, you shouldn't be trying to cheese. What you should be doing in these fights is finding safe ways to avoid the damage whilst also having as much uptime as possible. Any uptime that you're not doing damage is, if you look at the enrage bar, when you're cheesing and standing over here doing no damage, for example, you're just losing out on, um, like it's just gonna make fights longer. You're gonna enrage. You'll take damage, uh, bosses won't die as fast. You'll likely die from the enraged damage that happens and it's just not a good time for anyone. Uh, so even in a non-speed run setting, you should be looking at ways of doing the most optimal amount of DPS as possible. So we just picked up some more crit chance there. We should be capped at around 100% now with full stacks, if I'm not mistaken. If not, it's gonna be just below it. Not enough to really worry about having to invest in too many crit relics. And we've got all the crit damage we can get now. So, we're just going to look for anything big. Um, we're going to pick up the shock duration here. This is going to be really helpful for making sure our shock doesn't drop off in the later parts of the fights. My god. Um, now that I've purchased all this crit, abundance shows up. So, let's look at our crit chance right now. We're at 30%. If we get 50 more, we'll be at 85. On. One, two. Let me do some maths real quick. Free. Uh, we'll be at 95. It's not enough to really worry about spending 240 just to get 5% crit. So we're not going to do that. We'll just hold it um, going forward. Uh, roll. Oh, we can't even roll because we're poor. Uh, what boss are we on now? We're on cats. Yeah, so from this point in the run, the run should actually speed up now. So the longest planets are over with just because of the fact that they were bots. They ate at a lot of time. But you can, you'll can you now see that the early planet damage for Bronte is really quick. It's just that once you get to Protean, um, a weapon build can still kill it pretty fast if you're having a very good run. It's just that in an absolute god run, when you're trying to get as much damage as possible, have the most speed as possible in your run, a skill build will get you there first. Like a skill build will kill Protean faster than a weapon build will. It's just getting the skill build online, which takes time. Cool, and now we just melt one of the cats. Oh, and we get knocked over. I've played Anvil before. Have you seen me play Anvil before? I've played Anvil before. I play a lot of Anvil. Did you know that? You can't tell, because I keep getting knocked over by mechanics that should be dodgeable, but I've played Anvil before. I'm gonna dodge. Reapply shock in a second. Almost waste that detonate, because I've played Anvil before. Um. Yeah, so I, I, I want to obviously keep the videos coming out. I still plan on making that liner video that I mentioned in the past with, uh, I called it the weeb liner with the swords and stuff. 
Honestly, it's a meme. Like, it can kill bosses pretty quick, but it's not his meta for speedrunning. <laughs> like, you can probably get a pretty good time. If you get a gross enough sword, it probably could be a good speedrun, but... Nah, it's just a meme, but it's fun. Uh, I still also want to do other just daily speedrun videos. Like, I... Oh, this is going to be good. More shock target. I just want to do more daily speedrun videos as well. Like, get, uh... Some more jungler footage out there. I know, jungler, bleh, but unfortunately he's still the fastest for speedrunning. Uh, and just like see what sort of times we can get. I also have confirmation from the devs that they are going to start clearing leaderboards on a weekly basis. But they've also said something similar to this in the past. Um, uh, from like the cheaters and stuff. Now, I can't guarantee that they're actually going to stick to this but that's a good thing that like instead of basically just constantly manually moving them one by one they're going to instead take long looks every now and then and then do like batch removals we're not going to shock here because it's about the transition i don't want to waste the shock proc which in my opinion is better than nothing but i've told them about these cheaters and stuff that are currently active on the leaderboards on Steam. I don't know about the Xbox ones, but on Steam it is horrid right now um, with how many are present. And um, I heard nothing back for a while, and I think it's been almost a month since then, and now we're suddenly hearing that they're apparently going to do it like weekly. So I'm a little bit skeptical. I wasted a proc there. This is what happens when I talk and play at the same time. I lose concentration, but... I mean, mistakes happen, right? Let's try and finish. The oh, no. You got a defense increase. That's not very nice. It's okay. We managed to transition it anyway. But, no. Um, I, I've played Blizzard games for long enough. I'm used to being disappointed in developers, so this is nothing new. But we'll... Uh, We'll see. If they hold up to their word, that's fantastic. I'll be a little bit more competitive on the leaderboards once again. Probably be able to persuade some people to come back and push for better times, but... As it stands right now, with the leaderboards looking like they are, there is no incentive for me to sit there and push rank 1 times. Um... Like, I... I season 3, I hit a sub 2 minute, like, time in uh, Camp and Stream Solo, and then we also did, like, a 140, 146 in multiplayer. So, I know we're well capable of getting better times. Nothing has changed to say otherwise, apart from certain breakers getting buffed, so the times will only get faster. Like, we could probably end up throwing a... Oh, we're going to pick up this bleed reactor for sure. We're going to be able to throw, like, Shuri into the mix and probably play, like, jungler Shuri Sandman, which would be a pretty funny comp. That, that'll be good to see uh, how well that'll do. I know um, some people on Xbox have been playing uh, Shuri, for solo times and having great success playing the restraint build which is fantastic to hear I'm, I'm glad that people are having some really really quick times with shuri now so that shakes up the meta there a little bit but unfortunately with how jungler is he's still going to be the king the don carleon one could say i think that's what they call get rid of this poly chopper and then he's going to charge in a second. Dash down. Bionic Pulse. Dash up. Reapply the debuff. So I was reapplying the 50% multiplier debuff there, not the uh, shock target. There is no indication really on the boss to know when that's up. You kind of just have to have a mental note of uh, when you first did it. By that. There should be a like slight icon that comes above their head sometimes. I did an entire post on Reddit in the past about all the debuff icons and what they mean. But uh, on some of these bosses, it's hard to see it because they'll like obviously extend above the screen, etc. So I wouldn't rely too heavily on seeing them. A hey, more weapon power. That's what we like to see. Uh, we'll pick up the gold tooth after. Also, if you can't tell, um, my sickness is basically gone. But I've also went to the doctors about my spine and they've gave me new meds. And for some reason, these meds are giving me a lot of energy, which is fantastic considering how hectic shit's been. <laughs> Wait for our stacks. Uh, we're on planet seven. Come on, one more critical defender stack. All right, we'll get it when we're going. We'll, we'll, oh, I should have teleported once more to maintain a critical risk. Oh, I'm gonna go inside. That's whatever. Throw out shot. And melt the helper. 
And now you can see, even though we've got all our buffs and everything going, um, the damage has slowed down. Even though we've been getting all the best stuff for weapon builds, like, it's just, this is the nature of Weapon Bronte, is her damage kind of just slows down. Whereas on a uh, skill build, at this point, the damage would be starting to take over, which would allow you to uh, pretty much, like, uh, what's it, what, what my, the words I'm looking for? Spam a lot of orbs and then just, like, remove a health power with each detonate if you get enough damage in your run. But right now, we're pretty much having to, like, be very careful, honestly. We're getting a little bit reckless here, so we're actually going to, whilst it's in this immunity phase, actually get rid of those worms. And finish the boss off here. Watch out for the darts. I didn't want to get too reckless there and then suddenly find myself dying randomly, so... Make sure to finish off the worms during the, uh, the iframe. Um, hmm... We don't have status effect targets, so I don't have any value behind picking up Freeze Reactor right now, so I'll pick up Goldtooth instead. I was toying with the idea of picking up Freeze Reactor to be able to try and skip some phases on Protean, but we don't have status effect targets, so if I miss those phases, then it's technically doing nothing for me. We'll just play it safe. Uh, we won't be able to afford a Relic now, but we can roll and be depressed at what we have to give up, so let's do that. Uh, we'll take the Shield and the Movement Speed that will just help us throughout the fight. Roll past this. Nothing great. Let's be depressed. Let's see. Alright. I predict two rolls and we're gonna see Mercy in one of them. One, two. Okay, I'm I'm sad. Actually, I'm happy that Mercy didn't show up. What am I on about? I can't afford it if it did. Get our stacks. Oh, I'm drunk. This isn't Protean. I just wasted all that money. <laughs> oh well. Ah. <laughs> uh. Let's see, this, this is one of those things. Uh, just make sure to uh, pay attention to your run. I thought we were uh, on Protea, not Gargantums. Whoops. Oh, my heart, dude. Well, that's 175 coins down the drain. Uh, to the right. Find a pulse. Oh, I should have picked up the Freeze Reactor now. Now I'm thinking about it. Oh, that would have been a perfect buy. On a pulse again. He's got a chart. Oh, I got knocked over by the slam before I could uh, do my teleport. That it's at this point in the run that usually you would hope to have something like status effect target or one of the bigger relics to like propel your damage forward. Which is why we picked up. Oh my lord, I'm just misplaying everything. I keep being greedy and saving one of my teleports for some reason. All right. And then finish off the boss. No shock currently active. There we go. What we got here? Indras? Nope. Indras are good. They, they do decent damage, but not what we're looking for. We're not going to roll. We're going to save our money for the next floor now, so we have more money to actually roll with and play with, because some numpty, I'm not quite sure who decided to roll their money in a shop. But it's okay. Mistakes were made. Uh, we'll pick up the double duration, sure. Roll once, nothing great. Roll twice, nothing great. Uh, roll three times, still nothing great. One more. Uh, wow. Oh, acceleration, perfect. Attack speed's fantastic for this build. Attack speed, so the way you should look at this build, and I know the damage didn't seem great on that last planet, but I promise you this damage can be good if you got some better multiplier relics within your run. Like, we don't need too many weapon power relics because the weapon power in this build could get quite high anyway from the, uh, um, like, upgrades and stuff you can get. You can get, like, 150% total from just throwing your orbs and teleporting. Uh, but attack speed's really good. It will increase your DPS uh, more than the weapon power would, technically. And then, um, you should look at attack speed as a like a means to replace cooldown reduction because attack speed within weapon builds i mean it's obvious right it increases your rate of fire uh cooldown reduction increases the rate in which you throw out skills and then 
you have all your glow multipliers instead of skill power you take weapon power it's like that's pretty much all that changes in weapon and skill builds is attack speed and which weapon power or skill power you pick up all the relics are usually the same all right we got all our stacks let's go in while it pulls backwards wait for the jump lead will remove that teleport again now he's got a phase so we're gonna wait teleport to maintain our stacks This is what I mean, like, the, the damage of a weapon build is not terrible, okay? But, skill builds will remove health bars faster. We're not going to pulse or anything, because we do not want to waste the shock proc right now. Shock proc is the most important thing to make sure we don't mess up in this fight. So we're going to detonate right now to maintain our critical defender, though. And shock got, got applied from the decoy. Find it pulse backwards with the movement speed, then we run up. He's going to get, oh, he got some, he got defense. That's sad. So defense can bug in this phase. He has super ammo already, and now the defense from the Titan obstruction might last the entire duration of the fight. Yeah, this is tragic. Oh, if we can make it to the last phase, then we're okay anyway, but we're out of shock already. That's something I hope they ever, like, they, they do fix. Like, that's the biggest bug, in my opinion, that needs fixing and addressing is the armor in this phase and the fact that the armor from the obstruction can last. Gotta be careful not to waste our teleports. Don't want to heal the boss. Teleport up here. Oh, this is tragic now. So the way that you meant, so, so pretty much the only way that you prevent the obstruction getting applied to the boss here is if you got to the boss before, like in a, in a decent enough time to the point where it's not going to be lined up perfectly, which is why it's important. And sometimes you'll hear me in videos say like, oh, I should have waited one or two seconds because it makes it so like you can, um, oh my God, that bot's in the way. That was all that DPS just gone. One, two, three, four, five, six. Teleport down. By the debuff. Yeah, this is the damage of our shock, unfortunately. But you can tell that the uh, super armor is still active because we're actually doing less damage per shot, even when he's meant to be taking more damage um, than we were in the previous phase. And then, two, three, five, six. Teleport. Oh, I mistimed that. Okay, we'll just apply our debuff now. Tragedy. So this weapon up here? Homing? Okay, it's whatever. Debuff. Unload. Don't look. I hope that no one lets this uh, be a... Uh, a, uh, what's it called? An example of the power of weapon power Bronte. Yes, I said it gets weaker towards the end of the run, but this is the result of a bug right now, unfortunately. Uh, I promise you the damage is usually higher on this part. You just gotta try and make it so, one, if the tired obstruct is good to proc in the fight, like pop in the fight, and when I say that, it's the alert pop in the top right corner of the screen right now. If it says defense plus, then that defense plus will actually last the entire of the... Uh, fight basically for a protean for some reason if it procs during the fire phase and then the um he also during the fire phase he gets super armor whenever he's not silver if you cause him to transition um and that super armor effect drops off during that transition animation like the the vulnerability sorry drops off during that uh, transition animation he'll gain the super armor from that and that will also remain for the entire fight so the, basically it was like double dipped on super armor there which is unfortunate which basically means he had like around 80 to 90 percent defense value which just sucks obviously but anyway thank you very much for watching guys um i'll catch you in the next one and i'm sorry this one took so long to come out but i hope it's adequate anyway see you later